God is here to bless us this morning. Our text this morning shall be taken from the book of Psalms, Psalm 46, verses of verse 1. Psalm 46, verse 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. And our focus this morning, the topic of our sermon is a shelter in the time of storm. Jesus is a shelter in the time of storm. What is a shelter? A shelter is a something or a place that provides cover or protection from weather, harm, or danger. This structure we are in can be classified as a shelter. When the sun is shining, when the rain is on, we can be protected under this building. So a shelter is a place or something that provides cover or protection from weather or from harm. In many advanced countries today, safe room or shelter is part of their building, of their homes for protection in time of emergency or danger. They also provide bomb shelters in, in strategic places, in strategic locations in their cities. Why? To protect them and save life in time of air raid, missile, or rocket attack. So therefore, shelter serves as a refuge and a hiding place in times of danger. We are talking of a shelter in the time of storm. For Christian, as we have read in our text, God is our refuge and strength. It's a present time. It's a present help in time of trouble, time of distress, times of hard heartache. Is our shade. It serves as shadow from the heat of life. It's our defense by day. It's our defense by night from the arrow that flies in the darkness. It's our rock. It's our hiding place. May this God be your refuge, your shelter today. Amen. And the best and effective shelter is the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. So powerful. So effective. May we hide under the blood of Jesus. As we have heard a few weeks ago, that this, this year, 2024, we want to hide in the blood of Jesus. Because many things is going to happen this year. But if we hide in the blood of Jesus, we are secure. May this God continue to be our God when our faith is in Jesus Christ. We need, not, we need not be afraid because he has promised to keep us, to protect us. As was said, a shelter in time of storm. What is storm? Storm is an ex extreme weather condition with very strong and violent wind heavy rain and often accompanied by thunders or lightnings such as hurricanes 
tempest, cyclone, windstorm, blizzard, or tornadoes. Time of storm is a time of trouble and distress. In the modern day technology advancement, I've made it possible, make it easy for people to identify storm, to trace, to track, and to predict the landfall of storm. That is where it will land. And this type of information has been of help to prepare for people either to evacuate or to run for safety and thereby saves lives and property. That applies to physical storms. Or we can call it natural phenomena. But there's another type of storm, both physically and spiritual, that is the storm of life. This storm of life comes to everybody, every human being. Either you are a male or female, old or young, rich or poor. No one is immune from the storm of life. Either you are a believer or a sinner, all of us are exposed to storms of life. But for Christians, Jesus has forewarned us in St. John chapter 16, verse 33. John chapter 16, verse 33. Jesus has warned us that in the second part of 33, in the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. That's the consolation Christians have, that in our tribulation, and when we see storms, Storm can be sickness, can be distress, but Jesus has promised to be with us. We have a song that we have been rendering here titled, God Has Not Promised. For Christians, God has not promised skies will always be blue, that there will be no cloud. God has not promised that we will always have sun without rain. He has not promised that we are not going to have trials and tribulation and woes. But God has promised strength for the, for the day. He has promised light for the way. He has promised grace for the trials. He has promised help from above. He has promised to show us his unfailing kindness, his undying love. May this God continue to be our God. As I've said before, storms of life can come as trials, distress, tragedy, loss of valuables, loved ones and all these tragedies all these storms usually comes unexpectedly it happens suddenly as it happens to the disciple in our scripture reading passage mark chapter 4 verses 37 and 38 The disciples, they were troubled. They were in distress. Thank God Jesus was with them. In our troubles, if you are Christian, Jesus is with us. 
They fear that they are going to be drowned. But they did the right thing that we too should seize the opportunity and do today. No matter the storm of life that is raging in our life, if we do like the disciples, they cried. They went to Jesus. Jesus was asleep. As a human being, he was tired. They woke him up. Master, the tempest is raging. There is no doubt that we perish. Jesus arose. He commanded and stilled the raging tempest. He commanded, peace be still. May Jesus speak peace to all, all the storm that is raging in our life today. At another time, the disciples alone were in the ship and uh, there was a storm. Jesus was coming on the sea, walking on the sea. They were afraid that ah, they thought it was a, a, a spirit. Then he, he commanded, fear not, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter said, is it you, the Lord? If it is you, they command that I should come on the, on the water. And say, come. And Peter started to walk on water. That's a miracle. As long as he was focusing on Jesus, he could walk on the water. But by the time he turned, take, took away his eyes and looked at the bushra of the, of the storm, he started singing. But he did the right thing. He shouted, he cried, Lord, save me. And he was saved. Glory be to God. Today, no matter what we are passing through, God will undertake for us. In the scripture, we have many of the patriarchs who encountered storm of life. In the Genesis chapter 32, verses 9 and 10, 9 and 11. Genesis 32, let's look at the experience of some people who are Christian, who believe God, their reaction to problem in time of trouble. Jacob was coming back from Padon Aram, where he has gone to sojourn. But before he left home, he offended his brother Esau. And now that he was on his way back, he sent to him, God told him, go back home. But Saul said, okay, be coming. I'm coming to meet you with 400 men. He was afraid. And he prayed. Verse 9. And Jacob said, O oh God of my father Abraham, and God of my father Isaac, the Lord who said unto me, Return unto thy country and to thy kindred, and I will deal well with thee. 11. Deliver me, I pray thee, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I fear him, lest he will come and smite me and the mother with the children. He cried to God. We have a song that says, Does Jesus care? If we are children of God in time of trouble, all we have to do is to cry to God. That's one song that the choir usually render said, Does Jesus care? When my heart is pain. Does Jesus care when my way is dark? And the songwriter replied, Oh yes, he cares. I know he cares. His heart is touched with my grief. When the days are weary and long night dreary, I know my Savior cares. No matter what storm of life that is raging in our life as Christians today. Jesus cares and is ready to help us as he did for the, uh, 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 the disciple in uh, the reading portion. Another example is that of David. David 
was the anointed man of God, the second king of Israel. But between his ordination as a king and the throne, he was in problem. He was being pursued by Saul. For about 10 years, he was running from rock to cave, but he did the right thing. He called unto God. Let's just see a few verses in 2 Samuel chapter 22. 2 Samuel 22, shall I read just a few verses, 5 to 7. 5 to 7. When the waves of death compassed me, the flood of ungodly men made me afraid. The sorrow of hell compassed me about. The sneer of death pre prevented me. In my distress, I call upon the Lord and cry to my God. And he did hear my voice out of his temple. And my cry did enter into his ear. Verse 17 and 18. He sent from above. He took me. He drew me out of many waters. 18. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them that hated me, for they were too strong for me. God who delivered David, no matter we are passing through, you are experiencing now, if you can call to him, he will do the same for you. Another example is that of Paul the Apostle. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 27, he was on a journey to Rome to witness before Caesar, to defend his faith. He was in the ship with other prisoners and the crew and the soldiers. Storm arose, heavy storm arose, and they were in jeopardy. But Paul prayed to God, and God heard his prayer. Let's just see just a few verses in Acts of Apostles, chapter 27. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 27. We are reading just a few verses there. Yeah, 27 verse. We are reading verses 20 to 20. And when neither sun nor day nor star in many days appear, and no small tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, you should have hearkened unto me and not have loosed loose from Crete and to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you but of the sheep. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God has given thee all them that sail with thee. Although they lost all their belongings, the sheep too wrecked, but as God has promised, they were all saved. The same God is our God, is our shelter. No matter the storm we are weathering, God will give us victory. In our present days, many of us have traveled by air or by sea. And at many occasions, we can remember we have encountered storm of various degrees. There have been turbulence in the mid-air, and it's a time of panic. It's a time of fear. It's a time of distress. At times, the plane will seem as though it's going to break into pieces from the turbulent storms. At times, the plane will go down 
you, at times it will fly up, at times to be shaken. And at that period, on such occasion, people are afraid. So we start wailing. So we start crying. Everybody will start calling on their God. But for children of God, in, time, in such time, they will just be at peace. Yes. They will just look up and say, God, if it's your will, I am coming home. They will pray, you are the master of storm. Please, calm this storm. Amen. And many of us are witness that in such occasion, God has intervened. Yes and has brought them to, to, their, to their desire haven, Amen. that God will be our God. Amen. Let's just see how it looks like for those traveling by air or by sea. In Psalm 107, shall read just a few verses. 107 verses 23 to 30. Psalm 107 verses 23 to 30. They that go down to the sea in ship, that do business in great water. They see the work of the Lord and the wonders in the deep. For he commanded and raised the stormy wind, which lifted up the waves thereof. They mount up to the heaven. They go down again to the depth. Their soul is melted because of trouble. They read to and fro and staggered like a drunken man. And they are at their wit end. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and he bringeth them out of their distress. He maketh the storm a calm, so that the wave thereof are still. Then are they glad because they are quiet, so he bringeth them to their desire even. That same God is still our God. He will steal all the tempest in our life. Let's keep holding on to him. There are purposes for storm. Some storms come into our life because of sin and disobedience. Some people, they live, they disobey God's injunction. And from there, storm of sickness incurable sickness has come into their life. But God is a God of love. If they can cry to God today, he will deliver them. You know God sent Jonah, go to Nineveh. I don't want them to perish. But he didn't want to go, he went his own way. And God sent storm, a correcting storm for all those who have going away from God's will. May God send correcting storm and bring them back. Amen. At times, God allows storms to come our way to make us know the power of God. As he did in the reading portion, that after Jesus rose up and calmed the sea, the disciples, they wonder, what manner of man is this? So at times, God allows storms to come our way so that we can prove God. So that we can know how powerful is our God. At times, God allows storms in our life. And if we endure and God give us victory, we will be a blessing to others. May God make us a blessing to others. If we want to withstand the storm of life, we need to live our lives according to the instruction of God found in his holy word. Today, the whole world is passing through storm. Is that not so? The whole world is passing through storm. There are problems, distress in many countries. In our country, Nigeria, are we spared? We are also experiencing storm of life, storm of insecurity. Storms of inflation, storms of economic hardship. But we, are, we have been crying to God, and He's going to see us through. 
Today, many marriages are experiencing storm. Am I correct? Many families are experiencing storms of life. Individuals are experiencing storm of life. But Jesus commanded peace on the Sea of Galilee. We are praying to him that he should command peace to our problem. One writer, one songwriter depicts what the uh, disciple experienced in a song titled Peace Be Still. He said, Master, the tempest is raging, the billows are tossing high, the sky is overshadowed with blackness, no shelter or help is nigh. Then he said, Carest thou not that we perish? How can thou lie as asleep? When each moment so madly is threatening a grave in the angry deep. But Jesus is the master of storms. He said, The winds and the waves shall obey his will. Peace be still. Whether the rot of the storm to sea or struggle or evil, whatever it be, no water, no storm can swallow the ship where Jesus lies is the master of ocean and earth and sky they all shall swiftly obey his will peace be still recently about a month ago our church experienced storm gunmen kidnapped our children at a murikiti the people of God rally round. We pray to God a, a, a sure shelter, a refuge, and see how swiftly he came to our rescue. So that's assured us that no matter what we are passing through, Jesus will give us victory. Jesus will speak peace to our problem. Jesus is the prince of peace. He's the master of the storm. As he commanded, peace be still to our raging sea. To the tempest, he will do the same for us today. This morning, I think we must tell Jesus all of our problems. That songwriter too said, I must tell Jesus all of my trial. We have the opportunity. The disciples, they have Jesus with them. They cried unto him. He delivered them. So this one writer says, I must tell Jesus all my trials. I cannot bear this burden alone in my distress. He kindly will help me. He ever loves and cares for his own. I must tell Jesus all of my trouble. He is kind, compassionate friend. If but I ask him, he will deliver. And in my grief, when I call, he will help. I must tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus. I will tell him, I cannot bear this burden alone. I must tell Jesus. Jesus is waiting at this altar to speak peace to all the storms of life that is raging in our country, in our lives. He will command peace. Let's see the opportunity to tell Jesus. God bless you.